Question 5. Is the Earth very, very small, or is the Sun very, very near? Eratosthenes' calculation of the Earth's circumference is dependent on the light from the Sun being parallel, as it should be if the Sun is 93 million miles away. But anyone can go out on a sunny day with broken cloud and see that the light that arrives on the Earth is not parallel. The light rays come down at angles, indicating that the Sun is actually very close. Now, the official explanation is that the Earth's atmosphere refracts the Sun's light, and that's why the light comes down at diverging angles. So, if the light from the Sun is always refracted, then that would mean that Eratosthenes calculation was made with refracted light, and therefore must be wrong, and the Earth must be much, much smaller. So which is it? It seems to me that if you still claim that Eratosthenes calculations are correct, then the light cannot be refracted. But if the light is not refracted, then the sun is close. And if the sun is close, then for Eratosthenes to observe what he did, the Earth must necessarily be flat. Question 6. In a similar vein, how does a convex lens make light diverge? So again, the official explanation for diverging sun rays is that the Earth's atmosphere refracts the sun's light like a lens. But the Earth's atmosphere is apparently a convex curve. So that would act like a convex lens and converge the light, concentrate it like a magnifying glass you'd need a concave lens to make light diverge as we observe. Now, some have said that it is actually the angles between layers of clouds that seem to make the light diverge. But again, observation says that this is not the case. Here, there is nothing between the plane and the cloud, and the light is clearly diverging. And this NASA photograph is taken from above the clouds and still the sun's proximity is apparent. So how does the atmosphere make light diverge?